mid-30s, my wife and I made some pretty big changes in our life. We moved to near my wife's hometown in northeast Japan, and we started a small sustainability networking center. I went back to school to study a master's degree in sustainable development. We were growing our own food, and we embarked on a natural built house um, built in the time old traditional Japanese way. Sustainability permeated our entire lives at that time. Um, it was during this time that I joined an NGO that was building tra small trading ships for the developing world. And that really ticked all of the sustainability boxes for me, even though I didn't really have a nautical career at that time. Little did I know that those first steps into a nautical life would be the first steps in a journey, or a voyage if you like, of 15 years that brought me to where I am today. Life was good back then, and my children were blossoming. Um, as I said, sustainability was permeating everything we were doing at that time. But then a critical tipping point came, which took me in a deeper and different direction. March the 11th, 2011, was pretty much the same as any other day. I was outside chopping wood when the earth shook, unleashing nature's power and underscoring human or man's folly. On that day, we lost family members, we lost friends, to the tsunami in northeast Japan. And the following day, there we were evacuating from one of the greatest peacetime disaster zones around the four reactors that had exploded. Now, when I reflect on that time, that was when unsustainability was really laid bare to me. And I, I made it my mission to go out there and really make some changes. But before I go on, I'd like you to reach out and touch something, anything, something, touch something on you or touch something around you. Now, almost certainly everything that you've touched was delivered by a ship, had the materials to make it delivered by a ship or the energy to make it delivered by a ship. And that could be once, that could be multiple times. Over 80% of everything that's traded is traded on ships. You know, this is a vast, virtually invisible industry that pretty much brings us everything that we eat, it warms our houses, it clothes us. Now, that touches almost every part of our lives, but that comes as a price. Large-scale shipping, about around up to 100,000 vessels, uses or burns some of the most polluting fuels in the world. And that releases up to 3% of global man-made greenhouse gas emissions, along with a lot of other pollutants, which cause respiratory problems, premature death, and so on. If that was the same as a country, then those emissions would be around the same as Germany or the whole continent of South America, a dramatic amount. And we need to ask a question. What if the shoes you're wearing or the coffee you had this morning or the iPad you're using could be moved in a different way? What if we had an abundant zero emissions energy source that was available around the world. It didn't need to be mined, refined, transported, bunkered, traded or spilled. And what if that was delivered to the ship at the point of use for free forever? Well, we could, we can and we are. But that's not a fuel. That's an inexhaustible energy source, the wind. 
Now, in 2014, I helped set up the International Windship Association. And this was creating a space for designers, engineers, wind propulsion projects to really develop their wind propulsion systems. And that grew from a group of 12 pioneering uh, projects up to an industry segment that's now over 150 members just in our association. And that includes some of the biggest shipping companies in the world. Now, when we think of wind ships, our mind's eye drifts off to Jack Sparrow and square rigged vessels of old. And while there still are vessels like that trading goods, um, we now see a whole raft of bigger vessels using wind assist systems to partially move them and partially propel them. There are now 15 of these, some of the largest ships in the world. And there are many more pending. So soon we will also see primary wind vessels at this size, very large ships. And while they're not powering the ships completely, they are substantially reducing the emissions. So for large ships, they can reduce between 5 to 20%, up to 30% if we start to adjust the operations, the speed, routing to maximize wind. For new vessels, the sky's the limit. Now, if we were to roll out wind propulsion across the fleet, this decade, we could actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions or human-made greenhouse gas emissions by up to 1%, just by themselves. But also, because it's a free energy source, the savings could actually give us the funds to help decarbonize the other aspects of shipping. So adding another 2% of global emissions. Now, earlier, I, I mentioned about it being an invisible industry, and it seems very far away, pretty much like those, those vessels that you see on the beach, you know, those silhouettes, they're pretty far away. And while that's true, shipping affects every part of our lives, but in turn, our lives can affect the shipping industry. I'm going to give you five actions. Five actions that will enable us to actually have an impact on shipping. One, as a consumer. Two, as an investor. Three, as a traveler or tourist. Four, as an activist. Or five, as a parent, sibling, or storyteller. So, as a consumer, you could push your uh, local supermarket or local shop to make sure that the goods they're uh, selling that are imported are moved with the least carbon emissions transport system. And many big brands are actually listening to those customers and taking action. Alternatively, you could really go to the source, buy some goods from a, a small sale transported company. For example, luxuries like tea, coffee, rum or chocolate and help to build an alternative trading system, similar in scale and ambition to the fair trade movement. As an investor, you know, or through your pension fund, you could encourage, you could, you could go directly and, and invest in wind propulsion companies, but you could encourage your pension scheme, for example, to invest in brands that are embracing wind or low carbon shipping and divest from companies that are business as usual models. As a traveler or tourist, you, know, you can take a ferry from a company that's actually uh, embracing wind, and there are more of those now. Um, alternatively, if you could afford it, take a cruise, but only one on a wind-powered ship. Then you can minimize your impact on pristine and beautiful areas of the world. As an activist, campaign for clean air in your ports, on your beaches, even in your cities, where some of the pollution is obviously from land, but some of that will be from ships and the sea. And 
Finally, as a parent or a sibling or a storyteller, when you draw a picture of a ship, give it a sail, not a funnel. When you're talking about the oceans, words matter. Sailing is for wind ships. Motoring is for all other vessels. And if you're in touch with your inner pirate, it's not just R. It should be R. It's rewind, not rewind. So I urge you, join us on this voyage. Join us on this voyage in the decade of wind propulsion to deliver on the promise and potential of wind propulsion in commercial shipping. Together, we can build a cleaner, safer and more sustainable way of doing maritime transport. Thank you.